Emmett sheep rancher John Peterson is an eternal optimist. He loves being a sheep rancher. He's done it for 30 years and counting. Well, I like being out here, you know, for one thing. You know, I like, you know, the fact that you work for yourself. I've, I, I taught school for three years and I, I, uh, uh, I poured concrete, did construction work as we worked into the sheep business. Uh, you're your own boss and you're, you get to be out here. I have to remind myself a lot of times that, you know, like you're up going to herders camps, that, you know, be happy or be thankful, you know, you could be in an office somewhere or something, still pouring concrete. Peterson's wife, Anita, has Basque roots, a deep connection to the sheep industry. My wife and I, we grew up, you know, in Idaho and your kids and anywhere you went camping. If you went in the spring somewhere camping, you usually had to drive through bands of sheep. And uh, I mean, you saw them and I always was fascinated by it. I thought it would be a fun way to make a living, I guess. Fun's not the right word probably, but it's always been interesting, you know. Going into the 2020 grazing season, Peterson faced two new challenges. A major tussock moth outbreak on Packer John Mountain forced Peterson to reduce his sheep numbers. The bug infestation led to logging activities. By reducing his herd, he could zigzag around the logging activities and stay in business. And then, in March 2020, Peterson and sheep ranchers westwide got caught in the crosshairs of the COVID-19 pandemic. Suddenly, lamb prices plummeted badly. When the pandemic hit, uh, everything shut down, the cruise lines and the, the restaurants throughout the country shut down and that's where the majority of the American lamb is, is sold into and consumed. So it's been quite a devastation. They've, the prices have come down probably 40, 45 percent from where they were and, and it's uh, been leading to some financial struggles for these these producers. When Peterson shipped his sheep to market last fall, prices were bad, but within weeks, the market suddenly changed. We put them in a feedlot in California and fed them, and it, it uh, turned out good for us. We, you know, it doesn't always work that way, but the market improved and, and came back and uh, strengthened substantially. This is the uncertain life of a modern-day sheep producer. They have to cope with many variables almost every day, every year. But Peterson is okay with that. Seeing a new crop of baby lambs being born in good weather conditions gets Peterson revved up. I think lambs look real good, real promising, so that's good. Yeah, I, I'm optimistic. I, uh, it's a lot more fun if, uh, if there is optimism, you know, if you think Boy, these lambs, you know, might be worth something this year. And any business, I guess, is like that. If uh, you know you're going to go in the hole, it's not. It's hard to, to get too excited. But, uh, so yeah, no, this year looks promising, real promising. Lambing begins in January at the Peterson Ranch. The ewes came into lambing season fat and jolly from grazing on alfalfa fields nearby. The ewes have lambed well. The ewes came in in good shape. We had hay fields uh, all fall, more than we could get to, which that doesn't happen every year. In mid-January, the ewes begin giving birth to lambs. Peterson's helpers quickly move the mother ewes into the lambing shed to keep the newborns out of the wind and cold. Every ewe comes in with her lambs, and goes into these pens, you call them a jug, and uh, um, they're in here for uh, two or three days, you know, the ewe goes out into these sun pens, the pens are mucked out, they're rebedded, and we're, you know, we're ready for the next bunch. And the guys continually are picking up ewes, or bringing ewes in that have lambed, or, and uh, um, the weather's been mild, it's not as urgent, sometimes you've got to be right on it, I mean, you've got to get them up and in right away. While the ewes and lambs are in the shed, they get a unique paint brand number to keep the ewes and lambs together. We like them to be in here as long as we can leave them in. They do better. And then the ewes and lambs are moved outside. They go out into sun pens out here and uh, we put together a couple ewes with twins or four ewes with singles and then it's just a matter of mixing them into uh, 
to bigger bunches until they'll end up in these pastures in uh, a group of roughly 250 ewes and their lambs, and that's a truckload. It's important to start small and slowly work into larger groups. For those lambs, you know, they bond with their mom. They learn to, uh, to find their mom in bigger and bigger groups. Some ewes have twins, some have singles, but ultimately they try to get two lambs paired up with each ewe through grafting. We graft a lot of lambs. Your feed costs are higher, your labor costs are higher when you shed lambs, so you've got to try to get twins on every, every ewe you can. In early April, the foothills above Avamore community begin to green up and it's time for Peterson to truck the sheep to a drop-off point on the edge of the subdivision. Some of the Avamore residents come out to watch and take pictures. From this point forward, the sheep will follow the green up on a big journey from Avamore to the Boise Ridge to Garden Valley to Smith's Ferry. The grazing season will finish up in late August when the lambs are shipped to market. The big journey is 65 miles by highway from point to point, but it's at least twice as far going through the mountains. Peterson's herders are ready for the long journey, with face masks to prevent the spread of COVID. They'll be camping outdoors with the sheep for the next six months. A number of livestock guardian dogs will tag along with the sheep as a non-lethal method of predator control. The dogs keep the coyotes at bay, and they also defend the sheep from mountain lions, black bears, and wolves. The coyotes are always going to pick at you. They're going to nickel and dime you. They'll, they'll take a lamb you know, every night if they get a chance. But they're not a threat to come in and, and kill in big numbers. Last year, we had wolves around us on our summer range most of summer, and we had no confirmed kills. And I, I think it was because we had probably the best combination of dogs that we've had. Guard dogs are very protective of the sheep, and that means they can be a bit testy around hikers and mountain bikers when the sheep are grazing around recreation trails. Peterson has talked to Avamore residents about what to do. We put out signs, we talk to people, you know, the white dogs, get off your bike, talk to them. If you act like you're running from them, they think prey. You stop and tell them you're, and they recognize you're a human. Walkers and joggers should leash their pets when sheep and guard dogs are in the area. Avamore has more than 20 miles of hiking and biking trails in the area. Recreationists are coexisting with the sheep and guard dogs. The biggest part is education. We make an effort, I think, to, uh, to work with the people. They're supportive of, of what we do, so, uh, and I stay out of their hair. I keep my head down and, and uh, you know, basically, you, you, grace through there and, and uh, no problems. In late April, the sheep are bedded down in a grassy mountain bowl next to the Broken Horn Trail. It's quiet and the sheep are happy. The sheep herders camp is located on a hilltop nearby with the pack stock grazing quietly beside the tent. Stack Rock, an iconic feature near the Bogus Basin ski area, can be seen off in the distance. As the green-up occurs in May, Peterson's sheep move up on the Boise Ridge and graze slowly toward Harris Creek Summit and continue toward Garden Valley. The weather stayed cool, wet, and snowy almost into June. Finally, spring gave way to summer, and the ewes and lambs had tons of forage to eat on their way down the mountains into Garden Valley. The sheep grazed in succulent green meadows in Garden Valley on a late June evening. Even the elk thought it was a perfect place to be. The following morning, Peterson and his crew drove the sheep from the meadows to the little town of Crouch via the Banks to Loman Highway. They started at 6 a.m. to avoid disrupting vehicle traffic, and it all went smooth. The sheep passed through Crouch and then north on the Middle Fork Road. Eventually, they steered the sheep into a private land meadow where the animals could hang out and graze after a busy morning. I always worry when we have to put them on the highways, you know, I wake up and I don't like it being on a major road, but uh, this morning went as good as it could. There was very little traffic. It's cool today. Yep. The sheep, I mean, they, they moved, you know, and uh, um, nobody mad, nobody had to get anywhere in, uh, yep. in a hurry, so it was a, we made it. It was, it was about four and a half miles, I think, and it went 
we started a little before six and we are here at, what, 7.30? The sheep looked happy grazing in the tall grass meadow, and the lambs were doing well. The cool and wet June weather provided plenty of feed for the sheep. Yeah, but I don't want to jinx anything. It seems like any year I think that, then it, I'm wrong, so I'm, uh, I'm not going to say. Landowners like the sheep to graze around their homes to keep the fire danger down. All this forage this spring, there people that live, you know, with homes in the timber like this, they're concerned about fire. And, and, and we've noticed that, you know, like yeah. I was telling you with the cabin owners that uh, sometimes used to, used to, they'd shoo us away. Now they'll, they'll ask the herders to, to come down and graze, you know, a little more around their property. By this time, the COVID-19 pandemic had swept the world and lamb prices were bad. Peterson was well aware. You know, the thing that matters now is what these lambs will be worth the end of August, the 1st of September, when when they come to the corrals, and that's the unknown this year. And, if, and based, you know, on the market right now, I don't know where they'd be like a buck 20 to a buck 30, which is substantially a long way below our break even. But Peterson is still optimistic. This would be a, a good, good year. The lambs look good, and, and uh, uh, I think we're supposed to get rain tomorrow. Some of the country up high is probably not even ready yet. Now Peterson's sheep will be moving north toward Packer John Mountain, where the tussock moth outbreak occurred and logging activities were going full bore. About 13,000 acres of timber were affected by the tussock moth outbreak, and the Idaho Department of Lands plans to harvest about 6,400 acres of timber, mostly Douglas fir, to salvage their value. IDL officials helped Peterson plan a safe route across Packer John Mountain for the sheep to pass through. Hey, John's been really good to work with. I've been here up at the state for about 20 years. I've been working with him over 10 years. It is going to be a, an effect to his operation just because of the size of this uh, outbreak. So we're going to work with him this fall and continue to work with him the best we can so we can find other routes around uh, the plantations and the harvesting activities. Protecting the tree plantations will be a big priority in the next couple of years, Johnson said. We're going to plant about 1.9 million trees on this 6,400 acres. And we got a, you know, kind of a, a planting success ratio, you know, anywhere between 20 and 60 percent. And we'd like to see, get 125 trees per acre. So the sheep don't eat the, the top of the trees or trample them. Sheep really don't like to graze. Um, in the uh, trees, but there's so much grass and forbs when you plant them, the sheep really don't see, and they'll just bite the tops and spit the tops out or trample them or bed down in them. And if they bed on the trees, they, they can ruin that as well, ruin the plantation as well. So those will be concerns in future years. Packer John Mountain is so big, rising to 7,100 feet in elevation with many flanks and ridges that the sheep had an abundance of feed on their way to Smith's Ferry. A Peruvian herder on horseback rides over the summit of Packer John Mountain with guard dogs and border collies in tow. Early snow hints at the coming fall. On a sunny day in the end of August, Peterson's herders brought the sheep down into a vast meadow next to the Payette River. The long hike from Avamore ends here. The lambs will be loaded up on livestock trucks and shipped to a feed yard in California. This has been a weird year for Peterson in a lot of ways, with the COVID pandemic and other issues. Prices are still bad. Peterson has no idea what kind of price he's going to get for his sheep. He gets one paycheck a year at harvest time to cover a year's worth of expenses. So it's a huge deal. I talked to my wife last week, you know, the, the, the night before we shipped lambs. I don't sleep very good. You, I mean, it's it's a unique job in that uh, you got one paycheck. Come to the corrals, and then uh, the next morning you go to the scales, and it's like, you know, it's it's kind of suspenseful. While Peterson waits to see how much his lambs weigh on the truck scales tomorrow morning, his family and friends gather for an evening lamb feed and camp out on site. Everyone wakes early at dawn to get ready to help load the lambs on the sheep trucks. They set up temporary corrals to hold the sheep overnight. They get the loading chute ready on the truck. 
Peterson's son, Penn, separates the lambs from the ewes as they come down the chutes, single file. It all happens very quickly. In a matter of a couple hours, the sheep trucks are loaded and head to the horseshoe bend truck scale to check on the weights. It turns out that Peterson's lambs had a great year. The lambs weighed an average of 128 pounds. That's the best they've weighed. Maybe the second best all time. Three things must come together to make a profit in the sheep business, Peterson says. One, you need a good lamb crop at lambing time. Two, you need good weights on the lambs at shipping time. Three, you need a good price for lambs. Peterson put his lambs on feed and waited for prices to improve. Fortunately, they did. Every year is different, and even in a year with multiple curveballs, Peterson is upbeat. None of his herders got COVID, losses to predators were minimal, and they soldiered through all of the tough issues. I think it's a wonderful way of life. I think it's very valuable. I think it's a wonderful industry.